right now I live in Boston. Um, they're on the East Coast. Many of my friends there who have been there for a while, uh, they have a story. They all remember the day that this happened. On August 14, 2003, several states in the American Northeast and Midwest, and part of Canada, um, experienced what was then the second biggest blackout of all time in the world. 55 million people lost power. Some of them lost power for up to a week. And what could cause so much chaos? Given that no foreign power has ever taken down America's electric grid, especially on this scale, who was this master criminal who successfully launched an attack on our own infrastructure? The culprit was a tree. <laughs> It was a nice summer day. So people turned on their air conditioning, which heated up the wires. And because metal expands when it's heated, that caused the wires to sag. And it sagged enough that a tree in Ohio could reach to that wire and set it all on fire. <laughs> which is OK. This is actually normal. This happens all the time. And this would usually only result in one station, one power station being knocked out. But due to a software bug, uh, they couldn't send an automated alert to its neighboring power stations. So it took its uh, electric load and it passed it off to its neighboring power stations, which caused them to overload. So they passed their load on to their neighbors, which caused them to overload, which created a vicious cycle that swept throughout the entire Northeast, causing a blackout. This isn't the only example of something bad cascading throughout an entire network. For example, the 2008 financial crisis. A handful of banks in the US made some bad bets, and then Greece burns. That's because we're living in such a connected economy, for better and for worse. Or think about epidemics. One patient zero, a little bit while later, millions die. That's because we're all really connected, again, for better or for worse. And underlying all these systems is something called attractors. They're called attractors because they attract the system towards different things. Uh, in this case, they all attract the system towards failure. So imagine you have a ball on an oddly shaped hill. And let's say that the left-right position represents um, you know, how good or bad something is. So if the ball's way on the left, OK? Um, that's good. That means none of the power stations have failed and all the banks are still alive. But if the ball is all the way to the right, uh, that means power stations have all failed, the banks are all bankrupt. I uh, also want to clarify that the up-down um, axis is not good or bad. It's stable or unstable. So if something's really, if a ball is really high up in the air, it's pretty unstable. But if it's down, grounded, close to the earth, it's pretty stable. And now, stable and unstable, again, words are terrible. Um, they have positive and negative connotations. But here's the thing. Here we have a good but unstable situation, and also a bad but very stable situation. And these mountains are what we saw earlier. Uh, reinforcing loops, a ball on a hill. Uh, one reinforcing loop in the power station example is power station fails, it cascades onto the next ones. Or a bank fails, and that cascades onto the next banks. It keeps the ball rolling. And the valleys, those correspond to balancing loops. Um, ball in the valley. Um, for example, for the power station example, you know, eventually you run out of power stations to make fail. And for banks, eventually you run out of banks to make bankrupt. So the ball stops at the bottom of that valley. And these valleys are the attractors, because they attract the ball to a certain point. In this case, failure. So now you imagine you are standing next to this ball, and you're a complete jerk, so you push it a little bit. <laughs> and with a little small nudge, it gets past the tipping point, and then gravity takes over. The ball will quickly roll down the reinforcing loop, the mountain, and into the balancing loop, the valley, the attractor, the valley of death. And furthermore, you can see that if you were to go down and actually be nice for once and try to undo all your damage, it would take you a lot more effort than what it took you to push the ball in the first place all the way down. That's why a blackout can cascade in a few hours, but fixing it took weeks. Or why the recession can spread around the globe in a few months, but 
fixing it took, well, we're still living through the consequences.